Today is the 75th anniversary of VE Day and I just want to say a few words about VE Day and uh, how we should reflect on it to, on today in, in 2020. So back here on the 8th of uh, May 1945, of course uh, Germany had been defeated and they'd finally uh, surrendered and signed the, the papers to surrender. And when that happened, there was this massive celebration across uh, Europe and uh, the Western world. Um, it had been expected since September 1944, uh, this VE day, day as it was uh, became known, but now it was reality and so people began to celebrate. And famously, uh, a million or more people uh, sort of poured onto the streets of London, in particular filling up Trafalgar Square and up the mall all the way to Buckingham Palace where they were greeted, the crowds were greeted by obviously King George VI, his uh, wife, uh, Queen, El Queen Elizabeth, who we obviously many people knew as a Queen, Queen Mum, uh, and of course uh, Winston Churchill, and Winston Churchill very famously uh, was quoted as saying, uh, my dear friends, this is your hour, I go off and celebrate, you know, you've, you've been enduring a lot, now go and celebrate. And of course, very famously at that time, uh, the, 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 the princesses, uh, Princess Elizabeth, who of course is now our current queen, and her sister, Princess Margaret, um, joined those crowds. Everybody wanted to celebrate. There was this explosion of, celebra uh, of celebration. And you could understand that because there was all this uh, pent up frustration. Uh, They've been enduring, obviously suffering, uh, the bombing there in London, but also there was this pent-up frustration of not being able to get on with their lives. And so everybody wanted to celebrate. Um, and everyone could begin to look forward to the end of destruction and death of losing people. And of course they could dream about a better future. Now today, uh, on the 8th of May 2020, uh, of course as I said, it's, we're celebrating the 75th anniversary of that uh, celebration of VE Day. And there are still echoes of those same celebrations, things that we can still celebrate today. We still have the, those freedoms that were won at that time. Um, uh, Europe has largely, in the last 75 years, been peaceful, uh, and people still have their dreams for, for a better future. But it's good to ask ourselves a question, uh, as we think back and look at those celebrations, it's good to ask ourselves some questions. And these questions may be even uncomfortable. And the question I would, I'd like to think about is, what does victory in, in Europe mean to us today? What does it mean to us? We know what it meant to them back then, but what does it mean to us in that, uh, today? Because we don't have, obviously, an existential threat of the Third Reich, the Germans aren't going, the Nazis aren't going to invade us. Um, uh, the, and the world has largely become better at understanding uh, persecution of those minority groups like Jews. And uh, Europe, we are very united, actually. It might look no, it's not that way, but we are very united. There is NATO and, of course, the European Union. And um, so maybe it would be very easy for us to begin to think, well, victory in Europe doesn't mean anything to us now because maybe uh, there are no more battles to be won. Maybe uh, the, there is no enemy to defeat. Of course, at the moment, we think of, when we think about that, we do think about the pandemic. And there's, of course, this invisible enemy, which is uh, the coronavirus, the COVID-19, uh, which is claiming many people. Uh, but this invisible enemy um, is, is, is a sort of enemy which we know we will eventually subdue, we will conquer it, uh, there will be a vaccine. Um, so maybe there aren't any more victories to be won. Maybe uh, victory in Europe doesn't mean anything. But I don't think that's true. Um, I don't think that's true at all because it doesn't feel that way uh, to me, and I'm sure it doesn't feel that way to many other people. Um, you know, there are um, some problems, and actually the coronavirus itself has actually uh, shown up some of those problems, it's actually demonstrated. And the cracks are beginning to show, uh, there are some warning lights, and I think we've got to um, think about uh, what victory in Europe can mean for us. For instance, on a global scale, we can see that there are tensions beginning to grow between the United States and, uh, and China and Austria, Australia and China and other nations of China. And there seems to be this, uh, China is busy defending itself. Also on a European scale, we, we're seeing that the, uh, those differences and disagreements over just fun what we're gonna do in terms of funding, uh, that is just really just um, emphasising other disagreements that existed already over immigration, trade and of course uh, 
uh, political thinking. But even on our national scale, we can see that there are problems, there are deep wounds still left from the Brexit debate. Uh, uh, there was a heavy defeat of Labour and what that means. And you can see that just in the way that some of the uh, handling of the outbreak is being reported. So we may not have any enemies nowadays wearing swastikas or carrying guns, but there are problems nonetheless which are worrying and there are victories to be won. So what can we do? Uh, what is it that we can do together? Well, one of the things that uh, Christians are called to do is to um, act as what's known as ambassadors of re reconciliation. In the same way that we say uh, Christians believe that God has forgiven uh, each and every one of us and uh, we can receive that forgiveness uh, and then God is reconciled to us. In the same way, as Christians, we're meant to, uh, to embody that, we're meant to uh, promote that and act as ambassadors for forgiveness and reconciliation. So the, one of the things we can do is begin to think of ways in which we can actually, uh, locally, uh, nationally and then internationally, begin to speak up for, uh, instead of actually um, punishing our enemies, instead of um, urging there to be retribution, that we ask that we, we seek forgiveness and we seek to be gracious. Yes, there does need to be justice, but that actually we say that the proper road is is forgiveness. And this uh, this is the solution, this is God's solution to the problems that we see. So on this V Day of 2020, there still are enemies and there are still victories to be won. But we're called actually to join in a new victory parade, a victory parade in which each of us are forgiven by God. And in turn, we choose to forgive our neighbours and we forgive those that, who may even regard themselves as our enemies. And we do this to honour the Lord. I hope that you are able to enjoy the rest of the celebrations for V Day, and, uh, and it, even though we, even with the restrictions. And I hope that actually you keep safe.